Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. Nebraska. It's always one of the hunts I look forward to most in the whole season to be to be honest because it's a such such a unique hunt because it's physically it's not that challenging but there's a lot of deer and it's broken country and it just creates a it creates a challenge uh, that is something to be shared it's 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 not a lone hunt you're you're there together you're helping each other you're flagging each other in or you're glassing for bucks together it's a it's a good hunt for camaraderie this year we have cj davis with montana decoy coming in to join us he's actually flying into denver his plane has been delayed so we're heading on in to set up camp and he'll be in later this evening and then we'll be on a high spot tomorrow glassing trying to find some mule deer and hopefully make some stocks next four days or uh, five days will be uh, it's gonna be a good time this year we even brought a lawnmower where we camp sometimes needs a little grooming. Ready? All right, ready for Austin Powers? Welcome to the Inspired Wild <laughs> Podcast. We are out here in Nebraska for mule deer hunting, and um, this is one of my favorite hunts. I'm joined today on this hunt by C.J. Davis. Uh, you are the owner. Do you say that or president? I mean, what, I, how do I'm you? I'm president of Montana Decoy. Is what I say? Okay. Yeah. All right, president of Montana Decoy. You guys came in. Uh, that was Thursday night. Your plane got delayed. Yeah, both flights got delayed. You know how it goes. It's just part of it. And then, you know, my host here told me it was a two-hour drive, and it really was a five-hour drive. But other than that, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, um, nobody said I could read a map. <laughs> That's why I have on it. <laughs> um, uh, this is one of my favorite hunts. I think this is the fifth year we've done this, and it's a unique hunt. What do you think so far? Man, this is fantastic. It should be ideal for a guy hunting with a stick bow just because of the way you end up approaching the deer and you're usually catching them bedded and with the wind blowing, you can get really close. Hello. Glad you guys could make it. This is nice. Yeah, well. I like the pan. Do we get to drive it tomorrow? Yeah, and it's a deer slaying machine. You just run over them. We're ready to rock and roll, other than get you guys set up. And Colt's been out here, and he said there's, there's a lot of deer. You have free reign. Whatever you feel in your heart of hearts is a trophy. Yeah. I'm 100% I'm behind you. Excellent. My heart of hearts is... <laughs> Pretty wide open. It was cold this morning. It was colder, I should say. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. And uh, um, so we didn't have as far a, a ride in the Ranger, which is nice. That was it. That's it. Wow. Yeah, CJ, you only need that lightweight pair of pants. It doesn't get cold out here in Nebraska. You'll be fine. You want to do that? I 
I thought this. Oh. I'll bring you whatever you need. You'll be fine. I'm just making trips back and forth. I'll grab it while I'm down. Okay, that'd be great. What? Just one. What about my tripod thing? You grab that too. I'm gonna be hot. I hope so. I'm not. He looks like he has a snowmobile suit on. A doo-doo brown snowmobile suit. It's okay, I'll just keep shivering over here. You, as long as Trev's warm, gotta keep the host happy. Yeah, well, I'd be more than happy to lend this to you because I'm burning up. Oh, I'm thinking about going over there and snuggling with that cow. I'll, I'll, I'd like to see that. Yeah. I was waiting on you to turn the heat on in the tent, but then I remember we don't have any heat in the tent. I have a little Mr. Buddy heater. Why didn't we bring that thing out here and aim it right at me? Because uh, I'm not that cold. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a snowmobile suit on. I'm fine. There's a buck. Coming out of the corn. There's actually two bucks. They're both decent. That's These are the best two bucks we've seen. You see the upper one? No, I do not have them. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Those are both... The upper left buck is... He's nice. He's very nice. That's the best buck we've seen, wouldn't you agree? I would agree. So now, he... I mean, if they go down and head right, we won't see them, but that's a really good cut that they could bed in right there. <sighs> My coffee's good. I'm surprised you can drink a hot drink sweating like you are in that snowmobile suit. I can drink coffee in the middle of the summer. I've been told it's your only skill set, the ability to drink coffee. Well, it's definitely one that I do well. I don't know if I'd say it's my only. I did spot the big buck. Only because Tanner wasn't glassing. Tanner would have spotted him before he got out of the corn. Before we even left the camp. You sure? Building old without Tanner using a binocular. You sure propping him up? Well, he gave me a twenty this morning. <laughs> okay. And he offered me a coat, something my friend Trevin hasn't done yet. If you can fit in, in <laughs> my clothing, you are more than welcome. You should try it. How about I just use it like a lap blanket? That would be an improvement too. Yeah. Without you in it, of course. Of course. It always takes me a little bit on any hunt to get into the right mindset. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this one in particular, because my instinct is to, there he is, go get him. But I think patience serves you so much better here when you can, if you don't find the deer in a stalkable position. I almost think, I wonder if we shouldn't work down that way towards those bucks while they're still on their feet see if we can't get eyes on them i think that's a grandtastic idea because if we could get eyes on them before they bed and we can just wait until they're till the wind picks up midday and then go in and kill them if we're gonna do that i'm gonna have to shed the freaking I hate that for you. I really do. Oh, no, I'm okay now. Especially if we're moving. I'm looking forward to moving. And so the plan this this morning was Kyle and I are going to head over. 
and I'm going to get to play a little bit. And we get in a position where we get the wind right, and we are going to pop up over the ridge and drop in. I'm thinking, okay, we'll be 60 yards. Well, my thinking was off. First of all, the wind died down. Which is not good. Quite here. a yeah, bit. A lot. And it I was. look at Kyle, I'm like, this is way too loud. So we actually went down lower and kind of worked our way around, and it was just, it was loud. I screwed that up a little bit in the fact that I think I got a little aggressive too soon. I think he was closer to 40 yards. And uh, he blew out. When he blew out and he stopped broadsided it and then I ranged him he's 120 yards and um it was a good buck he wasn't bad yeah mm -hmm. that's not the well that sucked because it got loud real quick real quick and uh, the wind was funky, it was, it just wasn't a high percentage play, which I knew it was from the start, but that was actually a better buck than what I thought. When we got in close, I thought he was a little even smaller than that, but that was a decent buck. Oh, but it was an opportunity, we look at it as it's a numbers game. Bow hunting out here is a numbers game and you need a certain number of stocks to get a kill. One down, we're one closer to making it happen. When, I, when he ran up on the other side and stood there, uh -huh. he's 120 yards from me. Hmm. That is closer. Yeah, I would have probably, if I'd have known that, I would have slowed down a little bit. I was just trying to get eyeballs on No. Okay. And I knew he was just around the corner, and that's why I got a little elevation. I was using it. I think Tanner just got bored, and Tanner's like, I, th you know, I think you should, I think there's probably deer in some of these other cuts. You should go look. Tanner, can you go see if you can get eyes on that big buck? I mean, I would, but then do it if you're serious. I'm serious. I would love to do that. Yeah, you are the, you got the freaking eyeball. <laughs> there was two draws ahead of us um, that. Uh, that we didn't know what, what was in there so we were kind of nervous so I ended up crawling forward and crawling over a little rise and looking down into that bottom and there was a nice little four point So, you know, Tanner found the deer. We plotted a course. We split up so you guys could film from far away. And also, 
you know sometimes you get on those deer and they don't do what you want them to do they just sit there well somebody can loop around with a decoy and show it and then make them stand up give you that perfect shot tanner you took me out there and showed me but i was going to have to pop a camera 70 yards from him and kind of try and get out from yeah. behind a yucker and i was like that's too close You know, we kicked our boots off, I don't know, 80 yards from him or something. And Tanner and I are just slipping down, slipping down to the edge, and we've got good wind, which covers noise. And we're slipping down. Tanner had a really good idea of where he was, but I keep getting closer to that edge and closer to that edge. And, and that edge where he was, it was kind of on the side of a just a little point. And it was an ideal place for him to get because he could kind of see around that point with his head. And it's about to that point where I'm wondering why you haven't stood up and told me there's no buck there. Because, I mean, I was like, he, I got to see something here. But I didn't have a concept of how tall that cliff really was. So, nor did I fully understand how tucked in he was. It So he was tucked in there and all I could see at first were his forks. And so I get there where I can see him and you know, you're excited, but I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get comfortable with this situation. I wanna see, all right, here he is. Here's the, you know, the brush I gotta deal with. And I'm also worried about my shadow because of the sun, but because of that little cut, my shadow was sort of over the point, if you will, from him and he couldn't see it. So it was a great angle that way. And I'm looking at his antlers and, you know, I feel like I'm standing in somebody's house, maybe on the second floor of their house, looking down at a mounted deer head below me. So I, I just ease up a little now, how bit how close more. are you at that, at this juncture? Boy, I don't know. I'm, I mean, two steps and I would have fallen off the ledge on him, but he's down from me. So, so you're probably five, six yards. Yeah. I can't think it would be any more than that at all. Okay. You know, sometimes, not every time probably, but when they go to stand up, they like lower their head because their butt comes up first and then they stand up and I saw him do that. So I'm starting to draw, but he stands up and he's looking at me. And I think he was, you know, standing to stretch, move around, whatever. But when he comes up, all I can see is like three inches from below his jaw to his head. And he and I are just staring at each other at six yards. Couldn't have stood much more of that anyway, but I sure whiffed. Thought too much about it. Tried to read the wind. He hopped out. Could not figure out how he was looking up the hill the whole time. I thought when I walked up at first, I was just looking at something weird and I kept easing up until I finally saw his ear. But he was like, face this way. And was there for so long. 
my heart went like up, down, up, down every time he'd move. And then when he hopped off and stopped, I was like, thought I was in the zone, but I think I just overthought the shot, but at least it was a clean miss. So that was a whole lot of fun. Wow. Mm. Like when he stood up, I'm looking at his head and about that much of his neck. That was all I had. What the heck, man? I, I ran back to grab the decoy. I knew, I knew you were stuck because he was the way he was at. You didn't have a shot. Of, I don't know what else you could have done. Could have hit him. I mean, it's like I told Dave. Next time, I'm gonna give you a knife and you just jump down and stab him. You had Tanner for backup. I don't know what you're worried about. He's a young buck. I could have just hit him over the head like, hi -ya. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.